the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, my dear children, my dear youth, my dear families, religious sisters, fathers, all of you, people of other faiths, hearty welcome to this Eucharist once again as we pray to God. We have begun, uh, we here in my own city of Mumbai, we are still in a quasi lockdown, but many have already begun working. But I know there's anxiety in many families about loss of jobs, of cuts and pays and salaries. Uh, I, I, let's take pray, pray for all of them the uncertainty that at least people do not lose employment, that they're not put to hard stress. We pray that they are strengthened in this moment, that they have peace of mind, the peace I wished you at the very beginning, the peace of Jesus, the peace which only the Holy Spirit can give. Let's pray for all these people, my dear sisters in our convents, my dear families, my dear friends. We begin this Eucharistic sacrifice once again, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You come to make all things new, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the first book of the Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he went into the cave and spent the night in it. Then he was told, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Then the Lord himself went by. There came a mighty wind so strong, it tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there came a sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then a voice came to him which said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I am filled with jealous zeal for the Lord of hosts, because the sons of Israel have deserted you, broken down your altars, and put prophets to the sword. I am the only one left, and they want to kill me. Go, the Lord said, go back by the same way to the wilderness of Damascus, you are to go and anoint Hazael as king of Aram. You are to anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and to anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to God's word will be, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Together, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. Our response, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. Our response, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. 
I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. Our response, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Let us stand now as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Alleluia. All together. Alleluia. 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 The sheep that belongs to me listens to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed ad adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, makes her an adulteress. Whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, we are still in the Gospel of St. Matthew, still in chapter 5, which is the chapter which gives us our Lord's Sermon on the Mount, his inaugural address, as it were, inaugural sermon, where he begins his ministry, begins by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, blessed are those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for just, and so on, peacemakers, merciful, pure of heart. And then Jesus goes on to speak of, afterwards, we heard that two days back, he says, I have not come to destroy the law. Nothing of the law will be destroyed, because the accusation against Jesus, friends, was that he, as a religious leader, was breaking the law, breaking Sabbath. He was healing people also on the Sabbath. So that, that, that he was against the law and forming his own sort of club, which its own set of rules. He says, no, I've not come for that. I've come to fulfill the law. First reading, we continue to listen to the uh, adventure, uh, well, the pastoral adventure of the prophet Elijah. He is suffering. Great success. We remember we heard that uh, he, he had give, put that Baal was there, priest of Baal, 450, and he was alone. Uh, Israelites had been taken away, exported, had given up Yahweh, were unfaithful to Yahweh, but Yahweh showed his presence and by the fire coming down. And but yet, uh, the, then the queen was very angry with him, Jezebel, very angry and said, I'll kill you. And then he ran depressed. And so he went into a cave. And we saw, we heard in today's reading how God was in a, the wind. And God sends him. He was 
depressed, distressed, because uh, the, the amount of persecution he was uh, facing, uh, he wasn't able to take it anymore. And he says, take my life, Lord. The Lord protects him, as he always does those who are faithful to him. But the Lord also prepares a successor. says, go over there and then anoint your successor. The Lord heard his request to be relieved of this great burden, but protected him, strengthened him. And the beautiful lesson also, that God does not need earthquakes and thunderstorms to come. He came with a gentle breeze. God is gentle. God is kind. And in God's time, he can transform everything. But coming to the gospel passage, Jesus said, I've come to fulfill the law. And the idea, friends, is that he was perfecting the law, fulfill, make it, bring it to fulfillment. You have heard, today's gospel we heard, you have said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But he says, negatively, not commit, that's, that's not the only sin. It's, you must have the spirit of the law. The commandment, the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. We didn't read it yesterday because we had a feast of Saint Barnabas. That was the gospel passage. So Jesus was perfecting, thou shalt not kill. Uh, that's the extreme, but anger, hatred, prejudice is also a sin. And you should have in your heart love. That's the fulfillment of the law, not just not avoiding to kill, but doing everything else ang angrily, unjustly. That's so, so Jesus has come to perfect the meaning of what Moses was told, the, the tablets given. Same here, thou shalt not commit adultery. This commandment is there, the sixth commandment. But then Jesus says, that's not that you don't commit adultery, but everything else is okay. No, even a impure thought is bad. Have pure thoughts. Love people purely. Don't uh, have uh, impure desires. He goes on again. Uh, the whole sanctity of marriage, Jesus proclaims here. Marriage, the family is so sacred. No divorce anymore. Old Testament divorce. Jesus came to perfect the law. Not only not commit adultery, but marriage becomes indissoluble. It is from this passage which we hear that the church developed its doctrine of the indissolubility of marriage. You can't divorce, you can't separate, because God is there and he unites you and your wife, you and your husband. Similarly, Jesus says that in, uh, you've got to follow the Lord. He says, take off your hand, take off your eye means whatever it takes you, examine. The law is there, but study the law, try to come, have a intention. The spirit of the law is more important than the letter of the law. This is what Jesus was accused often of breaking the letter of the law. But he didn't, he was always accusing them, you don't understand the law. Now over here, two sisters and brothers, says, anything which takes you away, if hand is an example, but a, uh, any association, any friends, any uh, company, uh, any uh, thing in your office which takes you away from God, cut it off. Don't allow occasions of sin to come into your life. Examine yourselves. We are on the path of holiness, you and I. We're trying to examine how we could come closer and closer to the Lord, how we can become his real disciples, missionary disciples, Pope Francis says, how we can do that. And here we've got, therefore, to reflect, what is it that takes me away from making me through disciple of Jesus? I want you to reflect, I will reflect, so that we can make our lives again. The commandments are not added, but understand the spirit of the law, the spirit of the commandments, to live them with our whole heart. Thou shalt not kill. Yes, that we will never do, I'm sure. But also begin to have positively love in our hearts. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That I'm sure that you will, we all understand that. But the point is, the family is sacred. So sacred because God is present. Not, no family is indissoluble. This one unit, which is now we understand the domestic church. The church cannot break, cannot, there cannot be a schism in the church. That's one unit. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, but have a pure love for your wife and for all pe other people. Uh, blessed are the pure of heart. They shall see God. That's what Jesus says in the Beatitudes. And here in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is developing his whole 
uh, theology of the Beatitudes, the whole spirituality of the Beatitudes, helping us to come closer and closer to the Lord. As Pope Francis says in his Apostolic Exhortation, we should become the saints next door in our own neighborhood. We should also see in our neighbors the saints next door. God bless you, my dear friends. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in his divinity, who humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may become an acceptable oblation to you. Lead us to grow in charity. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, our thanksgiving itself is your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they can become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ you be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, merit to be quest to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ's peace be Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to eternal life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
we now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to do what is right. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks once again. Today is Friday, and we pray to the Sacred Heart in a special way. So therefore, we'll have the chaplet of the Sacred Heart at the at the end of the in the evening. But before that, uh, we'll have uh, Father Godfrey. Uh, pay attention to because uh, he's he finishes his module uh, today the, the, when he speaks about uh, wellness. Uh, he uses his he's a counselor, trained counselor, Salesian, God, Godfrey de Souza. So I welcome you, and I look forward also to learn something from what he says. Very very valuable insights for all families. I hope I know some of you are working, but those who, who are still at home uh, do watch. It will help. It will help you a lot, and you share with those who are working what he said. So have a lovely Friday. Enjoy yourselves to the extent possible, and uh, keep well, keep safe. And see you tomorrow. God bless. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Make of me what pleases you. Here I am. Here I am. Oh, my name and baby.
you, Ryan.